Hello, fourth graders. This is Miss Johnson with Uplift Hampton. I hope you're having a terrific Tuesday. Today is April 28th, 2020, and we are going to be talking about verb tenses today. So in your notebook with your pen and paper, go ahead and write the title verb tenses at the top verb tenses so we are going to be talking about the difference between present tense verbs past tense verbs and future tense verbs and I want you guys to all remember that a verb is what you do it is an action I am going to write a paragraph here and I want you to tell me whether this paragraph is in present tense, past tense, or future tense. Okay, I don't want you to write this paragraph down, but I do want you to read it out loud with me. So ready, set, read. The mouse darted across the kitchen floor. Mother screams and jumps on the chair. I will enter the room just as the tiny creature flashes out the door. I grab the broom and trap the mouse just in time. Is this paragraph in present, future, or past tense? Hmm. Let's look at the verbs to figure it out. So, let's go through and identify all the verbs. The mouse darted. Across the kitchen floor, mother screams. That's something she can do. And she jumps, something else she can do, on the chair. I will enter the room just as the tiny creature flashes out of the door. I grab, something I can do, the broom and trapped the mouse just in time. So with these underlined verbs, are they all present? No. Are they all past? No. Are they all future? No. So this is a very confusing paragraph. And sometimes in our writing, we confuse our verb tenses and we end up coming out with a paragraph that is a bit confusing to the reader so we don't know if this story took place today or yesterday or if it will take place tomorrow it's very confusing so now what we are going to do is take each of these verbs and categorize them into present past and future and then we'll get more in depth on how to identify which verb tenses and which to use in your sentences Let's uh, make a column. I don't want you to write this down, but we will use this paragraph um, for the next part of the lesson. So I just want you to split your um, paper into threes. So you're going to have one column that says present, squiggly line, past in the middle, squiggly line, and future. And just on your own, pause the video. I want you to take a moment to take each of these underlined verbs and put it into one of these columns that you feel like it goes. Okay, let's see how you did. Darted should be past it, so it should have went here in the middle. Screams is present. Jumps is also present will enter the will kind of gives it away and tells you that it is future flashes is um, present like it's happening right now grab also present trapped is past tense so your column should have looked something like this Notice how all the words in the present column end with an S or an ES, except for this one. And we'll talk about the exception. In the past tense column, all of the words end with an ED. And then in the future column, the verb actually begins with the word will. So that kind of tells us that that is the future tense. 
So what we'll do now is take some notes on each of these verb tenses and we'll have some practice and then we'll come back to this paragraph a little bit later. Okay, we're going to label this section verbs in present tense and everything that I write I do want you to write. So we have verbs in present tense. For example, if you also, if I'm going too fast, you can pause the video. Example, right now, Derek and Riley want another sandwich. This verb want is in present tense because it is something that they are doing at this current moment or right now. The present tense describes things that are happening now. In most cases, if the subject is he, he, she, it, or a person's name, so like a proper noun, then we are going to add just an S to, to make uh, the verb present. So for example, the verb cut would become cuts only if the subject was he, she, it, or someone's name. Place becomes places. Rain becomes rains. Notice how we just added an S at the end of that verb to make it present tense. If the subject is I, you, we, they, or more than one, so this one is plural noun, then it does not need an S. You do not need an S. Okay, so those words stay the same. So wait is still wait. Paint, still paint. And like, still so for these present tense verbs, you have to be sure that you understand what the subject is so that you can figure out the correct um, present tense verb to use. Okay, now we're going to move on to verbs in past tense. For example, Joe watched Frozen for the fifth time last week. Because this is an action that took place in the past, as in last week, then this verb watched has to be in past tense. You know that a verb is past tense when it ends in ed, and we're talking about things that have already happened. So to turn most verbs into past tense, we simply add ed. So here, Adding ed, for example, cook becomes what? Cook. And walk becomes walked. If, however, the verb ends in e, then we got to do something a little bit different. And instead of adding ed, we simply just add a D because it already has the E there. So we're just adding a D. For example, place becomes placed. It would look very weird if we added an ED here and it was like placid. That would be weird. So we just only add the D there. Another example is dance becomes danced lastly if a verb ends with a y 
we have to do something very special. We have to remove the Y. Remove the Y. And then add IED. So this is the same as the rule that says change Y to I and add ED. For example, carry becomes carried. Hurry becomes hurried. Got rid of that Y to scratch it out and add an IED. Now we're ready for verbs in future tense. These to me are the simplest. For example, tomorrow Molly will eat breakfast with her grandma. Okay, because this is an event that has not taken place yet, we have to use this verb will paired with eat, will eat, to show future tense for what will happen tomorrow. So future tense always describes things that haven't happened yet. And to turn these uh, verbs into future tense, we just simply add the word will to the base form of the word. So if the word is dance, oh, that's not dance. <laughs> if the word is dance, then the word becomes will dance in future tense. Simply just add will to the base word dance. If the base word is play, then we say will play to make it future tense. And if the base verb is bake, we say will bake to make it future. So for your pop question today, what I would like for you to do is choose one of these tenses. It can be future, past, or present. What I would like for you to do is rewrite this original paragraph that's all confusing in one of those tenses that you choose. So I'm not going to tell you which one to use. You have the freedom to choose whichever one you would like or the one that you feel like you're strongest at or maybe the one that you feel like you need more practice with. And you're going to take all of these underlined verbs and write them in the tense that you choose. So the picture that I want should have this entire paragraph rewritten and I should be able to clearly know which verb tense that you've chosen. Okay, so go ahead and write that and then send me a picture on Class Dojo. Don't forget that you do have a no writing assignment that is today. It should be very easy. It's over verb tenses and it will cover present, past, and future just like we did in the video. So I will see you guys on Thursday. Until then, stay safe. Johnson out.